It's not exactly candlelight and romance, but without the help of this crew working at Heron Lake, there would be no newborn kokanee salmon at all. The fish, popular with anglers both for their fighting spirit and frying pan flavor, are not native to these waters, but they can adapt. Kokanee are a little bit different from a lot of the normal salmon because they actually can survive their whole life cycle through fresh water and that enables us to stock them in these recreational fisheries in the inland states. But the adaptability of the kokanee has its limits. They spawn in the clean gravel beds of clear, rapidly flowing streams. That simply isn't going to happen in New Mexico's man-made lakes. They can't successfully spawn in these lakes, <clears throat> so in order to, to get restocked fish, um, we have to come out and collect the eggs and hatch them in a hatchery and then restock them. We actually hatch them in the hatchery and then restock them as fry and fingerlings. Making that operation work means collecting salmon eggs and sperm, or milt, every autumn and collecting a lot of it. This spawning needs to provide enough fish to stock five northern New Mexico lakes. Navajo, Elvado, Abiquiu, Eagle Nest, and of course, Heron. Whenever we stock the lakes, we stock anywhere from hundreds of thousands to millions of fry. You don't assume all those fry grow up to be adult fish. There is high mortality in fry just because of their fish prey on them. Uh, so, you know, the idea is you stock millions to get you know, thousands back and that's just kind of the way nature works. The Department of Game and Fish is actually in the middle of a multi-year study looking at whether it is more practical to stock the salmon as fry or wait until they're fingerlings. So far what we found is that it is more efficient to stock them as fingerlings. Uh, they're surviving two to four times better than the fry. The problem right now is space in the hatcheries, so for the time being, the result from this spawning effort will lean toward stocking fry, and stocking enough fry to make sure enough survive to fill the demand of anglers. Don Wolfley is a Heron Lake fishing guide. He says each year about mid-May, the waters begin to warm, the salmon start forming into schools, and the fishing season takes off. Once they start schooling, it just gets red hot. Uh, you come out here and you'll have uh, three, four rods getting a bite at the same time while you're trolling. It's just a real fun lake to fish, it really is. On the topic of catching fish, the spawning crew needs to catch them in huge numbers. To do that, they use a large netting operation that takes advantage of the salmon's natural tendency at spawning time to cruise the rocky shallows just off the shoreline. On a daily basis, we run two traps. Um, on a good night, we'll, uh, we'll capture about 2,000 fish in each trap. So we're dealing with about 4,000 fish a night. We ca captured a lot of new fish every night, so I mean the population is this thousands upon thousands of fish. This passive netting trap is more efficient, easier on the fish, and much cheaper than the electroshocking the spawning crews had to use a few years ago. What they're looking for in those nets are the salmon that have reached their sexual maturity, generally at four years old. Through much of their life, the kokanee looks a lot like a rainbow trout, but just prior to spawning, the males in particular undergo some dramatic physical changes. Metamorphosis to this real long snout, real aggressive teeth, and that's to, when they're in the stream spawning naturally, it's to help them fend off other males that are competing with the female he's trying to spawn with. They get real deep bodies, almost like a you know a pit bull like they're 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 changing their bodies to be able to fight and that's why they they change the female kokanees also have some body changes but nothing like the elongated fighting jaw and hump back of the males and both sexes change color at spawning time they get a real pink body and a, a green head um, they change quite a bit and then um, that after they spawn, like other salmon, they go through that same life cycle, they actually die. Yes, when it comes to mating, the kokanee salmon is a one-and-done species. All of these thousands of fish will die shortly after spawning. But the crew does set some of the fish aside for a good cause. We work really closely with them because we rehab wild animals, and they invited us to pick up some fish for our osprey and bald eagle and other animals that we that we have there both to rehabilitate and for educational purposes. The rest of the spawn salmon are returned to the lake with the hope that they will survive long enough to create a successful snagging season. On cold, near winter days, anglers will line the shore of these lakes, hoping to hook a few salmon before Mother Nature runs her course. We're lacking three for our limit. That is uh, 24, so everybody's 
pretty happy about it. This is the end of the salmon life cycle, but at the hatchery, a new cycle is beginning. The hundreds of thousands of fertilized eggs gathered by the spawning crew on any given day get treated like the precious commodity they are. The more dead eggs you have in each tray, the more fungus you're going to get. So it's really good to see eggs of this quality. These are looking pretty good. These aren't bad at all. Successfully hatching salmon from these eggs is both a delicate science and an art form. It takes constant monitoring, exact temperatures and water chemistry, and impeccable cleanliness. These are all full. These guys are doing a good job. There's already, they're already up to 2.8 million. It will be about three months before the fish start hatching out. And when they are somewhere between an inch to three inches long, they will leave the hatchery and restart that cycle of salmon life in New Mexico lake waters. It is also a cycle for the workers who devote their time to making sure the salmon survive here. If we didn't come out here spawn, we wouldn't have a, a kokanee salmon population. It is hard work in cold weather, but with obvious success.